Okay, Coach Saban is ready, and we will go straight to questions. Coach, on your right, third row. Tyler Shaw with KBTX and College Station. Uh, Nick, do you feel like uh, things are resolved between you and Jimbo Fisher, and are you concerned at all with the direction of college football with the way NIL is right now? Well, first of all, I have no issues or problems with uh, Jimbo. Um, you know, he's done a great job at A&M. He did a great job for us. Um, you know, I, I, I always take um, criticisms or whatever uh, in a positive way to self-assess me personally in terms of maybe there is something that I could do better. Um, and so any comments that anybody makes, you or any coach, um, I always take into consideration. So. Um, but there is no issues or problems. Um, I've spoke on this subject of, um, you know, name, image, and likeness is a great thing for players. And I'm all for players having the opportunity to uh, create whatever value they can create for themselves. And, you know, our players did extremely well last year. Uh, I think they made over $3 million in name, image, and likeness. And, um, but I do think that the concerns um, are, you know, there, there has to be something, some guidelines that sort of protect competitive balance, you know, and how we do this. And, you know, the advent of collectives um, has created a way for, you know, third parties to um, make contributions to marketing organizations who can create opportunities for players which I think is a good thing. Uh, I don't think it's a bad thing at all. Uh, creates opportunities for players. That's a good thing. I think when it's used in recruiting um, and players start making choices and decisions based on promises that are made uh, in name, image, and likeness, I'm not sure that is a good thing. Um, so I do think there needs to be some guidelines, you know, in that. And I think there needs to be transparency and, you know, how all that's done. And I do think there needs to be some protection for players um, when it comes to people who represent them and third parties who are involved, uh, people who get between, you know, the money and the player, um, because um, you know those people have a responsibility and obligation to professionally represent the players in a first-class way. And you know, right now we have no guidelines for you know any of these things, and uh, I think. You know, that's that's a bit of a concern. To your left, front row, Coach. Hey, Coach Jacques Duce, WAP TV in Baton Rouge. Uh, so many great coaches in this league already. I just want to get your thoughts on Brian Kelly from Notre Dame uh, coming to LSU and what he brings to the conference. Uh, Brian Kelly is an outstanding coach, uh, really good person. Um, you know, we played Notre Dame a couple times uh, in the playoffs uh, at Alabama. and. Uh, their teams are always extremely well coached, uh, very competitive, had the right kind of mindset in terms of, you know, how they went out there and performed and how they played, uh, very disciplined um, in, in terms of how they went out and executed. So uh, I have the utmost respect for, you know, Brian Kelly and the job that he'll, he'll do at LSU. To your right, Coach, second row. Coach, uh, last week, Anwar Richardson, orangebloods.com. Last week at Big 12 Media Days, Coach Sarkeesian said he wouldn't be there without you. I wondered if you maybe talked about the relationship that you had with Sark when he was on your staff, why you decided to bring him on, and maybe talk about the game that you guys will be traveling and playing in Texas in week two. Yeah, well, Sark did, you know, is one of the finest coaches that we've ever had on our staff. You know, did an outstanding job. Uh, does a good job with uh, player relations, very well organized, um, very good play caller on game day. Um, just did a fantastic job. So um, really excited for him and his family that, uh, you know, he got the opportunity uh, to go to Texas. And um, I know they're going to have a really challenging team, you know, for us next year. It's going to be you know, a very competitive game, which I'm sure their players are looking forward to and our players are looking forward to, which is what makes college football great. Um, but uh, I have a really good relationship with Sark. Um, he always very, very respectful of, um, you know, the head coach, our relationship, the principles and values of the organization um, that he sort of reinstated 
you, you know, instilled in the players and reinforced in a positive way. So uh, I can't say enough good things about, you know, Sark and how he contributed to the program and um, the sex, success that I think he'll have at Texas. Front row here, and then we'll go with the gentleman next. Good morning, Coach. E. P. Stedham, WHEP, Foley, Alabama. Coach, you've scouted hundreds, if not thousands, of players in your career. Can you recall those initial thoughts about Will Anderson Jr. and Bryce Young and the players they've become at Alabama? Yeah, well, you know, Bryce was an outstanding player, you know, in high school. Um, I think they won a state championship, lost the state championship in the in the finals, but. Um, you know, he was very productive, um, very, very collected in how he sort of led his team and the choices and decisions that he made and um, played the position a lot like a point guard in terms of, you know, how he distributed the ball in the right places to the right people at the right time and very accurately. Um, so, and, you know, he's got all the right stuff when it comes to um, – the kind of competitor he is, um, the kind of preparation that he does, the work ethic that he has to continue to try to improve. Um, so I can't say enough good things about the kind of player he was in high school and his attitude about how he's developed, you know, as a college player. Uh, Will Anderson, you know, we thought for us, because we play a 3-4, was a perfect fit you know, for the outside linebacker position, which, um, you know, if you don't play a 3-4, you know, some of those guys have to become defensive ends or they have to become stand-up inside stack backers. So guys like Will Anderson can make a tremendous impact on our team. And uh, he was an outstanding player in high school. Um, but here's another guy that has A-plus character, uh, A-plus work ethic, um, really good leadership qualities in terms of the example that he sets and how he impacts and affects other people um, in a positive way. And he's also a hard worker and a guy that's driven, you know, every day to try to improve and be the best player that he can be. So you're talking about talented guys that have all the right stuff to uh, develop their talent to be the best that they can be. and. Uh, these guys have tremendous pride in performance, um, and I could never been happier uh, with two guys in terms of uh, what they mean to the program, uh, how they've represented the program, uh, what they've done to impact the people around them in the program. Front row coach left. Hey, Coach. Steve Moulton, WZZN out of Huntsville. I was wondering if you could comment on the secondary play, especially uh, Kool-Aid, Kyrie, and uh, what Eli Ricks brings to the table as well for you, Coach? Well, I think that's a work in progress. You know, uh, Kool-Aid has been injured. Uh, Kyrie was injured. Uh, so those guys have had limited work um, from spring practice, you know, until now. Um, uh, Eli Ricks is a guy that started in this league, and um, he has to – you know, sort of prove that he has a good understanding of what we want, to, want him to do and how we want him to do it and why it's important to do it that way. Um, but I do think that those guys, those three guys' as development uh, is going to be critical to, you know, the success of our team. And I'm not disappointed in where they are right now, but I do think uh, we need to continue to make progress at that position if we're going to get the kind of consistency and performance that we need to uh, do the things that we'd like to do defensively. Front row coach to your right. Go ahead. Hi, Coach. I'm Dick Cox with Indy Sports and Cox Sports Broadcasting. Coach, if somebody did not know anything at all about Nick Saban, what would be the most important thing you would want them to know? How well I clean house. I've been cleaning house, you know, on vacation. Um, I get a list every day. I try to play golf in the morning. Miss Terry gives me a list when I get back and run the sweeper, take out the garbage, pledge the refrigerator. You know, nobody knows how well I do all those things. <laughs> on the left, coach, back row. 
Good morning, Coach. Jacob Goins from ESPN 106.7 in Auburn. You have Bryce Young coming back after winning the Heisman Trophy last year, but of course falling short in the national championship game. What do you expect to see different from Bryce Young from last year to this year on the field? Um, you know, I don't really expect anything uh, in terms of what I want to see differently. Uh, I want Bryce to maintain the right mindset in terms of you know, how he prepares, how he practices, how he impacts the players around him because that will have a significant impact on how well he can play because, you know, quarterback is a difficult position to play if the players around you don't play well, whether it's the receivers, the offensive line, um, the ability to run the ball, create balance. Um, so we, I just want Bryce to just stay in the – the right mindset of what he needs to do to be the best player that he can be uh, and to be forward thinking in terms of uh, the things that he needs to do to make the progress to create value for himself. Uh, because I'm sure that, you know, Bryce would love to be uh, a quarterback in the National Football League. And um, I think, you know, how he does this year will, you know, have a significant impact on, you know, that that part of how he develops his career and we certainly want to do everything that we can to enhance that and help him you know develop the skill set and the people around him to be able to have the kind of production that will enhance his opportunities in the future coach to your right second row uh hi coach michael giddens with the war Report, auburn the sec west has amassed some of the best coaches in the country uh can you talk about what kinds of things you're doing as a coach to um, stay ahead of the curve, having to coach against so many good coaches week in and week out. And given some of the um, marquee moments the Iron Bowl has produced over the years, do you miss Gus Malzahn? <laughs> Look, I have a tremendous amount of respect for Gus. I thought Gus did a fantastic job, uh, beat us, you know, more than I'd like to remember. Uh, and um, did it because he was a great coach, a great play caller, um, has made a significant impact on the game of college football in terms of some of the things that he's implemented through the years. Uh, so I have a tremendous amount of respect for Gus. Um, so, yeah, the Iron Bowl was crazy. Uh, it was a crazy game last year. Um, you know, Bryce did a great job in the last drive to be able to tie the game. Um, and I think the most important thing was the two sacks that he didn't take and got rid of the ball so he didn't get sacked because we didn't have any timeouts. And people sometimes don't realize that. They look at the completions, whether it's fourth down, third down, touchdown pass, whatever. Um, so, um, you know, I, th I think it's one of the greatest uh, games in college football and uh, one of the most difficult places to play when we go there and play it. So I um, have a lot of respect for the program and the people in it uh, and know that you know, we, we really have to continue to hire good coaches, have great energy and enthusiasm in what we do to make changes that is going to help us you know, sort of uh, not really stay ahead of the curve, but just be able to understand things that people are doing in the game uh, so that we put our players in the best position to be able to have a chance to be successful when they go out on the field and compete against it. Two questions left. First to your second row on the left. Hey, Nick. Uh, John Sokoloff with WCBI-TV in Columbus, Mississippi. You keep harping on the competitive balance that's necessary for the NIL. And Lane Kiffin yesterday mentioned that he thinks that there should be a salary cap for the NIL and that that would help. What do you think of that idea? <laughs> uh, you know, um, I, I, don't, I don't know what are the best guidelines right, for us to have to create the competitive balance. Um, and I don't know where it needs to come from. Um, I think if the NCAA is going to be able to implement their rules, they need some kind of protection from litigation. Um, because right now, I think they have a difficult time implementing rules because of lawsuits. And um, so there may be need to be something bigger uh, than that, whether it's done at the federal level or however it is to sort of create some guidelines for 
you know, how we manage uh, moving forward the future of college football. Um, I, don't, I don't necessarily have the answers. Um, I don't know if that's the answer, um, but I have a lot of respect for Lane. You know, he does a great job. He's a good coach. He did a great job for us, but I don't, I don't, I don't really know what the answers are. But uh, I do think we have a lot of people working on, you know, things that can protect the integrity of competitive balance, you know, in the future of college football. Final question back on the right. Hey, Coach Ben from Local 3 in Chattanooga. We asked Will and Jordan about Jameer Gibbs, and their faces sort of lit up when we talked about him. What it is about his character that excites you in this team, about having him in the locker room? Because it seems his play sort of speaks for itself. Well, he's an outstanding player. Um, he's a very mature person. Um, he's got great work ethic. Uh, he's very talented from an ability standpoint. He's got speed. He's a really good receiver. Uh, he does a great job of pressing holes and you know, getting the defense to commit to things and, you know, making a cut and gets to top speed very quickly, which are all tremendous assets for a running back. Um, so he's made a really, really positive impact, you know, on our team in um, a lot of ways uh, on the field and off. And we're very pleased to have him in the program. Coach, thank you very much for your time. All right, thank you. Appreciate you.